the PinePhone Pro Explorer Edition. Because you always wanted a phone that runs with Linux. A phone with toggle pins that you can turn on and off different hardware on your phone. A phone that's got privacy in mind. A phone that you can do anything with that can be converged into your desktop. A phone with the battery life. Well, there is no battery life. But a phone that heats up in your pocket to remind you that it's there. That when it suspends, you won't be able to answer calls because you're supposed to be touching grass anyways. A phone, that camera, that whose camera, looks like it's from the early 2000s and it's taking pictures in the matrix. That all aside, this is a phone I got in January when they first came out. Um, it's been a fun experience. Um, the first several months were nearly unusable because um, I was trying to uh, try different distros of the operating system and the only one that was really close at the time was Mobian. Um, I could actually kind of drive one day or two days. Um, and uh, once they got, originally it came with U-Boot, uh, my phone, and once they got to spend working on uh, Toe Boot, which is a different uh, BIOS, uh, switched over to that. And uh, it was much easier because uh, the phone would suspend. <laughs> and I didn't have to run a command to try to suspend it. And it would kind of work. Um, but where they're at now, it's quite a bit further along in the process. And joking aside, they have done quite a bit of work. The surprising thing is the battery life. Um, it is poor. Um, it's a combination of the battery and the fact that it's really hard to suspend all the functionality but to keep the functionality so you still get calls and you don't miss them you still get uh, text messages quite a bit easier than calls i'd imagine because calls are kind of a ethereal thing it comes in and <laughs> you can get back to the text message whenever when you miss a call you miss a call um but uh i think my battery also is kind of fucked because i had the uh uh, keyboard case I bought with it right away and I really wanted that to work this thing just like a dream like ah oh, extra battery phone will run forever got a keyboard I can just plug that in and off and run 16 year old me uh, I can go and hack all the web Wi-Fi's with my Pringles can um, the problem with the um, with the keyboard is uh, battery inside is constantly charging the uh, the phone and the phone needs to be a fast charge like um, all your little wall warts you use to plug into it to charge are the phone will drain faster than most of those will charge it so this thing's constantly charging it and it's especially in the beginning it wasn't charging it at a successful enough rate at a high enough rate so your phone would die and then this would die and then you would have drained both these um, and I'm pretty sure I probably uh, drained this one down to zero a bit too many times, and now it's kind of it's a little messed. So we're showing 57 right now. We'll, we'll watch that as we go through this video. Um, it's pretty responsive. This is running Mobian on uh, on the SD card, which is actually kind of surprising um, because the uh, the SD card boot time is significantly uh, different. But otherwise, the experience on the phone once you're in, it's um, it's not too bad. Um, granted, the EMMC is uh, 128 gigs of it is significantly better. The cool thing is right now we're booting off the SD card. There's a SD card and a SIM slot. Um, that's one of the other problems with this phone is the SIM card slot is a um, it's a micro. It's not a, it's not a nano, it's not the small, um, let's see if I have an example here. It's not the small little guy that, uh, everybody uses nowadays. It's, uh, one of the steps up, and you have to use this little SIM tray to put the card in. And if the SIM falls out of the tray, it'll bend the piece of metal that's holding it down against the terminals, 
or if you um, put the SIM card in and it falls out of the tray when you're trying to pull it out or it's not quite lined up, you could bend the, bend the little pins back. And I guess that's one of the failure points of this um, that a lot of people have experienced. Um, and do not put the tray in without the SIM card because you're probably just going to bend your, bend your little pins there. But let's power this guy down. And with Toboot, default is um, to power off EMMC. Um, and Toboot's on the SPI flash memory, um, which is, uh, I think, the first to, well, it's the first to boot. Yeah, but. So first thing it does, let's clean the screen off, is it'll check the EMMC. If there's something there, it'll boot to it. Um, you can bypass that by when you're powering up the phone, if you hold the power button and the screen, the LED up here goes red, that shows the phone's booting. Well, it's red if you hold the power, the volume down button, you can boot into an SD card. You hold that down until you see an aquamarine LED. And then Toboot will check the SD card for an operating system. If you need to plug this into your computer to show it as a, just a mass storage device so you can uh, access the drive and you flash a OS to it that way. You would hold the power button down. Again, you get the red light, you can release. While the red light is on, you want to hold the volume up button. And that will show you a blue um, uh, blue LED. You can release the power up, or the volume up, and then you'll be into uh, USB mode. And I'll show you that here in a second. But so we're just going to power the phone up normally. Go to the EMMC, hold the power button down for a second or two. Got the red light. Phone's booting. Booting. I'm gonna grab the uh, the official <laughs> Pine Phone USB, which I recommend for everything. So you probably just saw a Kali uh, Linux on there. I was just playing around with that because I've just recently uh, it's become pretty stable. So we'll go ahead and log into here. And the uh, 2006 in me wants to go back to the days of backtrack and cracking uh, <laughs> web passwords in like 20 seconds. All right, so now we're into uh, Kali. And you can see the uh, SIM card works, modem works, Wi-Fi reconnected. Um, I got this little keyboard here which I had plugged uh, Bluetooth to the device. So we'll see if it picks it up again. Yeah, if Bluetooth is on. Oh, there we go. So we got our Bluetooth. So yeah, it's, you know, it's Linux. There's your file system. Do an update one two three four super secret password and you can update from the software inside here too but it being Linux you can go straight to the console and do everything it's uh, this is based off Debian just like the Mobian is um, so if you wanted to you could uh, install any any software that would work on a, your distro of Linux with uh, an ARM processor so let's go and you can also really fuck things up if you want to. Let's see if we can just delete GNOME. Um, I'm pretty sure it's using GNOME. Ah, there we go. Let's fuck this up. <laughs> we're going to uninstall GNOME and we're going to go to uh, just do your uh, normal Linux boot screen there. I'm curious how bad this will be.
<laughs> so the real question is, what happens now that Gnome's not there when we reboot? So there's two ways now you could recover this. Um, you could probably, well, there's probably three ways. Um, you could probably hack your way into this somehow. Um, I'm not going to spend that much time on it. We could boot back to the Mobian uh, on the SD card, and we could just DD uh, ISO from the SD card to the EMMC. Um, the other way, which is a little more useful, um, just because you can use a full keyboard and all that jazz, and probably be what most people want to do, uh, especially if you're going from Windows and you want to use Boolean or some kind of uh, ISO writer. So you go ahead and plug in to the computer. We'll power this guy down first. Okay, red light flashed, hold down, oh shit. I wanted to hold down the other. So I forgot, it'll auto boot. Let me pop the battery out and just kill whatever it's trying to get into. If you have it plugged into power, it will auto boot, which is one of the things that was kind of a pain in the ass when you first got the device, because you didn't realize that it needed uh, a certain power level to actually even charge. It would get into this like boot cycle where it would um, try to boot um, and then fail because it doesn't have battery <laughs> and your charger is not charging it enough. Um, and it would just keep doing that until it drained the battery to dead. So we're gonna plug the USB in which is the same as holding the power button down for a second or two. And once we see that red light, there, we're gonna hold down the power up button, the volume up button. And then we'll see a blue light. And once that's there, we should see our drive pop up on our, on our system here. So from here, we could go grab whichever version of uh, the OS we wanted to get and download it, extract it, and then uh, DD it to that drive. If you're uh, running on Windows, you'll just it'll just come up as a USB drive. <clears throat> Same as here. You just go ahead and uh, flash whatever you want to it. But for right now, we're just gonna go back into Mobian. Power it down. The power is kind of a little weird on it, like especially when it first was out. It seemed like the power button would do different things depending on the time of day and how it felt. And it was either, excuse me, changes they have made or my knowledge level on the device. So I'm holding the volume down button. We we'll get the Aquamarine. We're now going to boot into Mobian off the SD card. So let's see what we're looking. Obviously, we're looking there. We're going to go to downloads folder. There we got uh, two distros, Manjar Arm Nemo, which is a sailfish. So let's see if that's still in the. Yeah, let's just flash uh, sailfish to it. Oh, there we go. That didn't take too long at all. Uh, 63 seconds, so just about a minute. So now we're going to reboot the phone, which, of course, the reboot, reboot. Um, the first thing it's going to try to boot to is the, uh, the MMC. So we'll do that so we don't screw up the port.
battery, I'm pretty sure. Um, you can replace it. Uh, the phone is pretty easy to disassemble and replace parts. I actually had spare parts in their store if you were watching when I was going through their site there. Like there's the main board there if you wanted to buy a new main board. And then here's the toggle switches to turn things off. Right now I have the headphone jack off and the headphone jack acts as the um, serial port too. So it's pretty cool. Um, overall, I would say this phone is not recommended for um, pretty much all users. <laughs> Um, unless you uh, are kind of a Linux enthusiast or device enthusiast or like to tinker or play around with things, maybe by this time next year I could recommend it to uh, uh, basic end users, but um, I just don't think it's ready for prime time. Uh, well, it's clearly not ready for prime time. Very responsive. It's pretty slow to open anything. There we go. Shows it 4G now. So didn't uh, we didn't connect it to the Wi-Fi? So the 4G is working. That'll be the uh, just go to Bing because that'll make you guys all happy. Yeah, 4G is working. So right out of the box, no configuration. Um, that's already quite a few steps up from where it used to be. And my gut wants me to uh, swipe it from the bottom, but apparently that's not a gesture. Gesture. So did I just close it? Uh, something else to play with. Uh, I'm probably going to go back to Manjaro, I think, do a daily driver if the battery is actually stable. If not, I'm going to buy another battery, um, probably one of those extended ones, and try to trim it to fit, and uh, give you guys uh, another video and update. Uh, thanks for watching.